Whoa, two Overlord videos within a week of each other? Damn, it must be Christmas or something. I know this isn't Albedo's episode, but I really just wanted to get this one done first. But my god is she decimating the polls right now. That could still change though. Anyway, as you can tell by the title, this video will cover information on every known world item from both the light novel and the anime. So if you don't want to know how broken some of these items were back when Yggdrasil was just a game, then this really isn't the video for you. However, if you're looking to have your mind shattered by some of the most overpowered, game-breaking, balance-tilting bullshit that you've ever seen in a fictional video game, then prepare yourself, because you're in for a treat. And maybe stick around till the end too, because I'd just like to also pitch the idea for a potential new type of Overlord video. Anyway, let's get started. If you watched my most recent video, then you'd already know what world items are. But if you're new, here's the quick summary. The remnants of the leaves of the world tree that were eaten by the world eater were scattered throughout the remaining nine realms as world items. There are 200 in total and each carry the power of an entire world within them. These are by far the strongest and most rare items in the game with only 50 ever being announced as discovered during the game's uptime. There's a subset known as the 20 that can only be used once. After that, they are set to vanish, but no one knows for certain whether they respawn in a different area or just disappear from the game completely, since no one wanted to risk using them should they not just vanish and instead respawn and fall into enemy hands. You'll see why once I start going through a few of them. I think I'll start with a pretty tame one, just to set the mood. This one was actually used in the anime to take control over Shaltir's mind. Now remember, world items can only be countered by other world items. So that's why Ainz's super tier magic didn't remove the mind control. The world class trumps everything. So Shaltir's mind control was caused by the item known as Downfall of Castle and Country, also known as Ruinous Beauty. It's a dress-like piece of clothing that allows the wearer to take control of the mind of any creature, regardless of any immunities that that creature may have. Though it can only control one target at a time, the effects will last whether or not the caster is around. The only way to remove the mind control is to kill the person under the item's effects and then resurrect them. So yeah, complete control over any creature for an indefinite amount of time, that's not too shabby. Although its uses in Yggdrasil aren't mentioned, I'd assume you could just go and hijack the most powerful NPC of an enemy guild, then bam, you'd gain a decently strong ally to help you raid their base. Another item that appears in the anime but is still quite vague on what it actually does is the Throne of Kings. This was received by Ainz's guild for clearing the Great Tomb of Nazarick on their first try, so it's more like a trophy than an actual usable item. What it does though is boost the stats of whoever is sitting on it. The extent and length of these stat buffs aren't quite known, but I'm sure it's significant enough to give you the advantage in a fight even while sitting on your ass in this throne. Some people theorize that it also seconds as a world item shield that encompasses the entire Tomb of Nazarick and its entities. Since the throne is said to be an integral part of the tomb, perhaps it protects its residents from the game-breaking effects of other world items. But let me know what you think. Yeah, so those two were pretty boring examples. Let's try talking about one of the known 20, Longinus. Yes, apparently that's how you pronounce it. And no, it's not referring to this Longinus. So Longinus was very simple but very powerful. When using this item, you could pick any target, NPC or player and completely remove them from existence, but at the cost of your own existence. Your data and the data of your target would be completely wiped from the game, and there would be no way of recovering it other than by using the resurrection power of another world item. So just like that, you could get your ass Thanos snapped out of reality, and all progress and time you've spent in the game would have been for nothing. This is probably the most ultimate fuck you that any gamer could pull off against another gamer. Speaking of Thanos, there's actually a world item that takes the form of a pair of gauntlets. They're called Avarice and Generosity, and we saw Mari wearing them in episode 12 to prevent her from succumbing to the effects of other world items while Ainz was fighting Shaltir. The left and right gauntlet, though very contrasting in appearance, work together to harvest XP and then store them for later use. So it's basically an experience point vacuum. The full extent of how it can be used either in Yggdrasil or the New World is still unknown. But just the fact that it's a world item must give it some rather high XP storage capacity, and might even help fund the use of certain XP costing abilities. It was during that same time that Aura was also given the world item Depiction of Nature and Society, a large scroll that outputs some pretty next level ceiling magic. The way that it works is a target space is first chosen, then it is isolated into a separate dimension. Apparently, the target space would be first swapped for a painted landscape before being converted into that painted landscape entirely. Everything within the target area, regardless of resistances, would be trapped in this alternate dimension. But that's not all. 
The user can select from a hundred different types of landscapes or worlds to trap the target in. Anything from poorly visible monsoons or fog-covered terrains, to more deadly lava-covered landscapes or lightning-filled plains, were all available for selection. That being said, it's not like once you were trapped, you were trapped forever. No, believe it or not, an enemy guild had actually trapped Ainz's guild in one of these separate dimensions, but they had managed to escape using one of the item's 40 randomly selected escape routes. When I say escape route though, I don't mean some path marked by the yellow brick road that you could just stroll out of. They were difficult enough that managing to successfully find and traverse one granted you ownership over the world item without having to kill the initial owners, so that's how it came into Ainz's possession. Moving on, we have Albedo's own personal world item, Ginnungagap. Ginnungagap? Ginnungagap. I don't know. It was secretly given to her by her creator, Tabula. Named after the primordial void from Norse mythology, this wand-like item is considered to be the most powerful world item against physical objects. It's said to be used to obliterate large areas, but when trying to wipe out a single target, it wouldn't be nearly as strong as an upgraded divine class item. Though the item is indestructible, it's quite situational in the sense that there are times in PvP where another item would be better for combat altogether. Sure, you can use it to let's say make a giant opening into an enemy guild's base, but you'd probably want to switch to a better item more suited for PvP right after. Now, how about another one of the 20? This one being called Five Elements Overcoming. Another simple one, it's just an item that lets you get into contact with the devs and request a change to a tiny little mechanic in the game. The magic system, so nothing too fundamental in how the game is played. <laughs> but seriously, this is just fucking ridiculous. I can only imagine the amount of stupid shit that players could come up with. Notice how I said request though. So that means that the devs wouldn't accept something as ridiculous as reversing the tier system to make tier 1 the strongest and super tier the weakest. At least I hope. It's thought that this was the world item that was used to monumentally change the new world in the past, but that's just a theory. In anime th Yeah, no, we're not going there. Now a lesser known world item is the Caloric Stone. This was obtained accidentally by Ainz Ulgon after gaining control of all seven hidden mines that contained rich deposits of what's known as prismatic ores. These minerals are considered far rarer and higher quality than adamantite. After using their monopoly on these seven mines to utilize and stockpile a large quantity of prismatic ores, their stock of the mineral known as celestial uranium had converted itself into the caloric stone. The full extent of its power is unknown, but it can be used to make a request to the GMs of the game. What that request entails, no one is really quite sure. It can also create or buff armor and weapons, or apparently be used as a golem's core. So each caloric stone can only be used once to create or enhance one thing. But stockpiling more of that same mineral is thought to produce another one. Though Ainz's guild was never really able to do so, as they had lost control over one of their seven prismatic ore mines. Which leads us into the next world item, known as the Ouroboros. This is another one of the 20 that, just like the five elements overcoming, can be used to make contact with the devs and request a single wish. Sort of like a better version of Wish Upon a Star. In the novel, Ainz had mentioned that when his guild had the monopoly on these seven mines, another guild had used Ouroboros to restrict everyone except from their own guild members to enter the entire world that the mine was in for an entire month. I mean, really? That's the best thing that you could come up with? Isolating yourself from all other players so that you can gather all rare metals before anyone else could? Why not just wish for a stockpile of rare metals? Or just wish for everyone else's metal to be taken away? Or just wish for those metals to become useless? There's so many things that they could have asked the devs for. I'm sure the devs have to negotiate with whatever unreasonable requests that these players come up with, but restricting access to a world for a month doesn't seem like that big of a deal from my perspective. Especially when you can ask for anything. But oh well, to each their own, I guess. <laughs> Let's finish off now with the last two of the known 20. First up, we've got Ahura Mazda, named after the creator and god of Zoroastrianism, which is one of the oldest religions in the world. It deals with the two constructs of good and evil, but more so that those who are evil will be punished and evil in general will just be destroyed. As such, Ahura Mazda deals significant AoE damage to targets that have negative karma, meaning that they're aligned with evil. The range of this attack spans across the entire world, so it's essentially a global attack on evil characters and NPCs. A lot of people tend to theorize that it's a counter to an unknown world item that can spawn an unlimited number of extremely strong demons. Then the last of the 20 is called the World Savior. If used correctly, it's thought to be able to single-handedly defeat the entire guild of Ainz Ulgon combined. 
Yes, I'm talking both NPCs and guild members alike. There's a catch with this item though. It doesn't immediately start off with the power to one-shot a level 100. Though it does get there, it's a club that is initially rather weak at first. But as you continue to use it, the power in each attack grows and grows until you're at the point where your attack can just obliterate the strongest person with the lightest touch. Consider it like Derriere's punches from the 7 Deadly Sins. The more attacks that she does, the stronger her punches become. Except, you don't have to perform combos with this club, and there's no known limit to the max power that this item has. So once you've equipped it as your primary weapon from your inventory, then have beat whatever poor souls that you've targeted it with, the moment that you unequip it is when it disappears. Well, supposedly anyway. And that's every decently known world item. There were also two others that were given to Demiurgus and Cocutus back during the Blood Valkyrie arc, though their abilities aren't quite known. You can speculate what they're capable of by reading up on the legend that their name derives from. So you've got Hygieia's Chalice from Greek mythology, a treasured cup that once belonged to the daughter of the god of healing and medicine. So it's probably a healing based world item with either massive AoE healing effects or single target instant regeneration. Then there's Billion Blades, though the generic name isn't quite useful in deriving its source from the legends. Atlas was also a world item that once belonged to Ainz but was stolen. This one named in reference to the Greek Titan who was most well known for being condemned by the gods to hold up the sky on his shoulders for all eternity. I'm not really sure how that could be embodied by an item, but I'm sure you guys have some ideas that you'd want to share. So let me know in the comments what you think that some of these world items can do. Anyway, that's pretty much all the world items that have been mentioned so far. As you can tell, Ainz's guild had the largest collection of world items, boasting possession of 11 of them. So if you were planning to mess with them, then you'd definitely need an equivalent number of them if you didn't want to get your ass banished to the Shadow Realm. Now before I go, as I said in the beginning, I wanted to pitch a potential new type of video by you. What would you guys think if I started a series in between these explained videos that covered events from the light novel that were skipped in the anime? If you've ever been on the Reddit episode discussion, you'll see a user by the name of Jin4, who always puts out a very thorough description of the events that were missed out from the novel. I've actually reached out to him and we're in the process of working something out. So if that's a type of video that you'd all be interested in, then let me know and I'm sure him and I could come up with a decent pilot episode together. But as always, thank you so much for watching and if you enjoyed this type of anime content, then you already know what to do. So until next time, ciao!